grace this morning in the house. There is grace this, this morning in the house to just pardon us and bring us to that place where our Father will take the whole occupancy of our hearts. And as we are being led into powerful worship, I just love when we say that, Lord, we are sorry. Church, do you know it's not easy to say the word sorry doesn't come so easily. But when a people comes before the Lord and they just bow and surrender and say, Lord, we are sorry. Lord, we are sorry. Lord, we are sorry. But all we desire is your heart. Just take one moment, wherever you are right now, and just ask for that heart that happens before the Lord and say sorry before the Lord in your own words, in your own ways, that the Lord has been so faithful and gracious to us. But yet we have been wanting and we have missed out so much even from him because of our heart and our hand and the heart. But this morning we are sorry. We are sorry, Lord. Just in your one or two words, one minute, Lord, we are sorry. Or all that we did not measure up to your expectation. We cannot miss out on your presence. Lord, if there be anything on this, any one of us at the altar, in our hearts and in our homes, Lord, this morning, Father, we bring all our hearts before you and we join them together in humility and surrender unto you and claim a washing with the blood of Jesus that brings wholeness and cleanliness of our hearts and our spirits, Lord, that we can stand before you and offer a sacrifice that you shall accept, Lord. And as you've been with us, Father, thus shall you continue to be with us, Lord. We thank you and we surrender. And as we go to receive this word, we cannot receive it, Lord, unless you have accepted of us, Lord. And so let every heart before you be pure this morning, acceptable before you, every heart that is drawn towards you, Lord. May you put this word into this spirit, Father, and let this word build us, Lord God Almighty, even as we walk on this season in you and with you, my Lord, with gratitude in our heart, even to receive from you in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you glory. We are thankful, Lord. We are thankful for everything. We receive you with thankfulness in our heart, Lord. Take your place in our heart and let your will be done to the glory of your name. We thank you. And now we release thy servant into your heart, Lord God Almighty. Father, we just want to thank you for the heart of Lucy this morning. We just feel like we want to bless her this morning, Lord. Father, we want to bless the heart of one that has so courageously advocated for your word, Lord. Every day we've had her start out and speak about the revelation of receiving the word of God every day. Every day. I don't know for how long she has stood out and specifically said this word has helped her and lifted her. And as it has helped her, she speaks to us every day that we must take this word and eat it and eat it and eat it. Lord, we want to stretch our hands over her and bless her this morning, Lord. Father, as you, as you remember, dear one that have stood before you and you have accepted, Father, may you accept the sacrifice of this dear woman of God. May you do her well, Lord, and expound her tent. Revelation upon the word she speaks about and she stands for, and we all stand for, Lord. May you release insight and revelation every day over her, that she may stand out not only to us, but before many and the great congregations and speak about eating the scroll, that we may eat the scroll every day. Lord, we bless even as he stands at the altar. May this word be our portion this morning to the glory of God. We thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and we believe. Amen and amen. And now we want to pass this time to our sister Lucy. Our time goes very fast. We want to hear what the Lord speaks through her to our hearts, even this moment of gratitude. And we know that the Lord will be pleased with all of us in this time of the day in the name of Jesus. Sister Lucy, take it over. Thank you, thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Jill. And good morning, everyone. Yes, indeed. It's the first day of December, and uh, it's good that, that we've been coming here every week in and out, and we can't get enough of God's word. Yes, today's topic is going to go around a um, topic that will leave us repenting and asking for repentance. At least for me, having prepared this word all that came to me was i need to repent through the word of god it's going to be such an intelligence of course i can't get away from this topic and today we are going to look at allies friends 
and enemies. Yes, I know. We don't talk about enemies, especially us, good people of God. We don't. But unfortunately, we generate them. We do. And by the end of this session, I hope we are going to see our part in repenting and what we need to do because it's part of such your life. It comes with the territory to generate friends and enemies. Thessalonians 5 verse 7. And once again, I apologize for my phone. It's still dim and video is not clear. So ignore that bit. Thessalonians 5 verse 11. This is how we approach our commands as to how do I approach my social life. My social life deals with my family, starts with me and my immediate family. Even if it's a family of one, a family of two, a family of three, that's your first social interaction. Then of course we go to the wider circles, relatives, wider relatives, and then friends, then community, then work, then church, everything else, we are a social being and we operate in social setups just like fish operates in water. Our water is the social surrounding. That's why the Salonians, I thought it was important when we are saying, therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact, you are doing. So you can see we are being requested, commanded, advised, told whatever you want for you best. Corinthians, Colossians 3, verse 13. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you grieves against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. How many times, even in the Lord's prayer, we are talking of being forgiven and being forgiven. But my sisters and my brothers, if you are like me, you know this word, forgiven? Yes, it's intellectually understood. But I can't confess from my own point of view, it's one of the hardest things to apply. Partly because it's a command or an action that needs to happen at the soul level. You know, it's not what I say. It's even sometimes not what I do because we are good fakers and we fake this really well. It needs to come from deep part of your soul, from your heart, from your spirit, mental attitude. So I personally find forgiveness not easy, but it's something we want to practice. But maybe from today, I have tried to forgive since I prepared this message unconditionally, everyone and every how. And I'll be forgiving, then I'll find out what it means to forgive. You know why it is hard? Obadiah, the book of Obadiah is going to be our basis. Interesting. I hope you can find it. It's just somewhere after Amos. The book of Obadiah, just one, a book, one chapter. It's somewhere in the minor prophets next to Amos. After Amos, before you get to Jonah, somewhere in between. But before we come to the book of, of, of that, let's look at Obadiah verse 7. And this is when I said, these friends are not easy to forgive. These allies are not able to forgive because sometimes you just generate enemies by being in this social environment. Now, these guys in this book will come back to know who they are. All your allies will force you to the borders. Your friends will deceive and overpower you. Those who eat your bread will set a trap for you, but you will not detect it. See, these are the kind of enemies I'm saying, how are we supposed to be able to forgive these people? But now because enemies, friends and enemies are an inherent part of our life, we find ourselves with 
God, Jesus talking to us. And this is in Luke 6, verse 27 to 28. Luke 6, verse 26, 7 to 28. In case all fails, and we have made enemies, because we do. We create enemies, and we have enemies. So I want you to keep in mind that there are people who are your enemies, who you know, these people, I don't like them. They are my enemies. But you've also been, there are people who don't like you because you've done one thing or another. Another. So it's a double-edged sword. Luke 6, verse 27 to 28. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Verse 28. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Who? How? Friends, allies, enemies. This is how we are supposed to behave towards them. And this is not in say, my sister, because we are talking of friends, enemies, allies, acquaintances, all these people that we interact with, because there are reasons why we must obey or learn to obey Luke 6, 27 to 28. And as we can see in Job 6, Job 6 verse 14, anyone who withholds kindness from a friend forsakes fear of the Almighty. <laughs> we don't want to forsake fear of the Lord. So there is a reason why we are being commanded to love these people, to love these enemies, to love. We, however, we are not being asked how they came about. We are just told to love them. But not also Job 42 verse 10 to, 7, to verse 10. After Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes in and gave him twice as much. This is where the issue of double portions come from. So we've got good reasons that we must. One, we cannot afford to forsake the of the Lord. Two, it is not until Job prayed for his friends these people, we can call them allies. We remember in Job how annoying they were, how they critiqued Job, how they embarrassed Job. But when Job prayed for them, it's like there is a condition, my sister, my brother, for your total and full complete restoration. And that condition is you must be fulfilling Luke 6, where you are praying for your enemies. You are doing good to them. And my sister, my brother, I can tell you it wasn't easy in the ancient times and it isn't easy today. So we are going to look at example of a community that God loves. Yes, you guessed it, the Israelites. And that is where we come to the book of Obadiah. Obadiah, and if you just go to Verse, verse one, you can see he's addressing the Edom. Edom is the land where Edomite lived. Edomite are descendants of Esau. I just feel so intelligent that I figured that out because you know I'm just starting to reading this word one year into it now. So anyway, Edomite are Esau. Now, if you are like me, you remember that story in Genesis of these sons of Isaac, they are fraternal twins. But you remember Esau is the one who was cheated. Jacob is the one who cheated Esau. Jacob is the one who stole Esau's birthright. Now, who is offended here? The person who is offended here is Esau. How is this guy supposed to continue enjoying the company of this, his brother? But let me tell you, verse one, God is speaking now. Hear the Lord's word. You know, now God is talking to Esau. We know Jacob, we know Jacob because we know Jacob, Jacob is Israel. He will be whoever he is. 
But what happened to Esau? The guy who was offended. So at that point, my sister, think about it. What happened to you? You are the one who was cheated. You are the one who was divorced. You are the one who was sacked. You are the one whose sister cheated or did whatever, whose brother. Here we are talking about fraternal brothers. You cannot get crosser in a such your setup. But my sister, I want you to think about that situation where it was you who was offended, where it was you that your family was cheated, your child was cheated. So we want to be the one on the receiving end. And let me tell you, that may be as far back as you can remember, but God has something to say about it. And that something is coming, verse 1, Lord declaring his anger against Esau, Against the one who was offended. So you can see from verse one, verse two, or verse one to verse four, God is angry. He's talking about your pride. I'll make you small. Why? Pride of your heart has deceived you. You have built whatever, you have done whatever. Yes, the pride of of our heart told me I'm the one who was offended. So I'm the victim. So I'm the good one. My sister, my brother, that mindset of victim mentality today is being challenged. Can you see verse four? Though you sow like the eagle and make your nest among the stars, from there I'll bring you down. My sister, this is God speaking. So declares the Lord. Esau is the one who was offended. He's the one who was cheated. Verse 5 to verse 9 of this book, we can see how, but how Esau will be ransacked. Verse 7, all your allies, this is where the first seven will lead. This is what God is saying to Esau, who was the offended one, the angry one. The cheated one. And I'm praying, God, my sister, my brother, may we pray from this moment forward that we leave that position of being the victim of anger from our sisters, from our brothers, because we cannot afford to stay there one more moment. That is what is called forgiveness. We must release them in whatever manner, form, or shape so that we don't attract or lose God's blessings. Verse 7. All your allies will force you to the border. Why? Your friends will deceive and overpower you. Those who eat your bread will set a trap for you, but you will not detect it. So you can see the question is, why is Jacob a sour summary? Now we go to verse 10 to verse 14. <laughs> Because of the violence against your brother Jacob. So when you are fed, offended, violence, and when you have a moment, look up the word violence. Because I know you want to tell me you never engaged anyhow, or you never did this. My sister, my brother, you'll be surprised. Violence is even at soul level. When you think evil, when you think something, Against your brother Jacob, you will be covered with shame. You'll be destroyed forever. Isn't he the one who stole my birthright? Isn't he the one who messed my family? Isn't he the one who got me sacked? Isn't he the one who said this to my mother, did that to my father, did that to whoever? Isn't he the one? You see? Verse 2, on the day you stood aloof, while strangers carried off his wealth and foreigners and entered his gate. My sister, that day you found your friend because you don't like him. You stood aloof on the day strangers entered his gate and cast lots. You should not. You can see when people, strangers stood aloof and carried his, you participated. So when your friend, when your enemy is in trouble, you stood aloof. You said, mm -hmm. <laughs> me, I'm not involved. 
I don't like them. After all, remember they are your enemies. That seems to be a problem. Verse 12, you should not gloat over your brother in day of his misfortune. You never gloat over your ally, over your friend, over your enemy, over your relative whom you don't like because he took that chapa from your family. And now you are near squatters were it not for God's mercy. Over you are whoever. You know, I said we generate enemies at a speed light because we then inhale it. Now my mother's enemies are my enemies. My friend's enemies are my enemies. My sister's, my cousin's enemies are my enemies. We generate them. But whatever you do, my sister, that is not the issue. This guy stores the brother's birthright. Yet God is saying, Esau, you had no business gloating over your brother's misfortune, rejoicing over people of Judah on the day of destruction, boasting, you know, so much in the day of the year trouble. My sister, how many times have we boasted? How many times do we laugh? Do we talk? Do we enjoy? Do we perpetuate that nonsense when we hear an enemy is in trouble? We are even the one who continues that story. My sister, my brother, let us always remember Luke 6. Verse 27 to verse 28, that command is with a reason because this is how suffering this. By verse 13, that is the fourth reason. Never march through the gates of God's people in the day of their disaster. No growth over them in their calamity in the day of their disaster or says their wealth. Clear. Number five. Never, you should not wait at the crossroad to cut down, cut down the fugitives, nor hand over the survivors in the day of trouble. My sister, my brother, that I hope is clear that this issue of forgiveness is not a choice. It is a command. It has severe consequences like we saw in job which ones are you willing to forgo your blessings double portion your full restoration or are you willing to forgo the fear of the lord our god there are consequences and these consequences are documented in obadiah verse 15 to verse 16 remember romans 12 verse 19 Religion, religion belongs to God, paraphrase, and that is God saying, leave room for my wrath, I will avenge, it's mine, that's God speaking, but you know what, we always fail and take matters in our hearts, so verse 10 to verse 14, we can see verse 15, your deeds will return to you, exactly, in short, I feel like asking, no, lago tomate. Why are you, by when you are alleviating, when you are unforgiving, you are taking the possession of God. By verse 17, but let's see what happens to Jacob now. Now the person you hate, now the person you cannot forgive, but on Mount Zion will be deliverance. It will be, and Jacob will possess his inheritance. 18, Jacob will be fire, Jesus flame. Esau will be stubble, and they will set him on fire and destroy him. You know, I felt very sad because we started with Esau. He's the one who was offended. Just like you, my sister, my brother, you are the one who was, who was wronged. You know, you had all the rights to talk about that family, to backbite them. You know, in fact, you entertain people when they are telling you nonsense about that family. You know, to talk about that person. If you could, you would do to them as they did to you. But my sister, my friend, revenge is one of the most useless, annoying activities of a human soul. And forgiveness is waste of time. In fact, if you are and you have unforgiveness, and I'm trying to tell you, my sister, my brother, go back in your life 
to as far as you can remember. And you you find you are hammering your parents' enemies. You inherited enemies. You recruited them. And I'm not saying you. I'm, when I say you, I mean me because this is me. And now I'm here praying to God for total, complete restoration. Pray for the heart to fall be forgiven. Father, I said we are saying we are here to repent just because this is me and my life, living through enemy-centered attitudes, joining in conversations, wishing them every evil this Selemite could conceive, oh Father. But today I'm coming to you to say, give me the heart and the soul to forgive and release them, to memorize Luke 6 verse 27, and to remember revenge and vigilance belong to you. And Father, you are capable, you do not need my help. That's why we are here this morning, to say that Jacob by verse 19, you can see Esau will stumble and they will destroy him. In verse 19 we, to 21, we see Jacob's frolicking. Now, my sister, if you want to sit in there and watch your enemies frolic, that's a choice. But the choice is narrow. By verse 21, and the kingdom will be the Lord's God Almighty. Conclusion here. What do we learn from this message is read the word of God because the word of God is like sun. It will shine light to all your areas in your life where you have these enemies, where I have these enemies. Pray to God to refute to me. And today we are talking human enemies. I know, yes, our enemies are not fresh and bright, but today we are talking such your context. Go back to as far as you can remember. Check your work. Check your teachers. Check your everybody who had responsibility, who may have. Ask God. Let's pray to God to reveal to us our known and unknown enemies so that today we will start a mission as we welcome a new year. As we close this year, we don't want to cross over with any old enemies. And as we generate them daily, Father, we now know what to do. Revenge and vigilance belongs to you. Our work is to read the word of God. As you read the word of God, you are the word of God, I like it because it evolves you. You evolve. It renews your mind. And as your mind is renewed, you evolve to a new person. And you find the version of you that was offended no longer exists. So my sister, you have no business be carrying a nanga that was done to your aunt when you are 10 years old. The loose version of a 10 year old no longer exists. But because of our enemy, the spiritual one, the schemes of the evil one, the want, I want to drag that on and that carries my world. You can see Esau and Jacob, they were fighting as boys, but you can see the whole tribe of Edomite was wiped from the face of the earth. So it's our choice for generations to come. So Lord, lead higher spiritual and emotional energy. So the more you read the word of God, the more you pray the word of God, the more you fast the word of God, the more you join in fellowship of believers, the more we come here to talk about the word of God. We read it whether we understand it or not. And God continues to review it to us. We start now generating higher spiritual and emotional energy. And that is when you start relieving the enemies. And I think and forgiveness is a process of this involvement. So Father, today we come just to ask for forgiveness, to repent for all our misunderstanding, that we forgot that we have evolved 
into a new version where you give us new bodies. But Father, we pray and we pray that where we had carried, where we had unforgiven our Jacobs, the Jacobs in our lives, oh Father, from this moment forward, we drop them. With the end of this year, we drop any unforgiveness in our spirit. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Amen. Over to you, Pastor. Glory to God. The bottom line of the matter, and this new season we are just beginning, is that before the Lord we go with repentant hearts and asking for forgiveness even for us to be able to experience and also to walk, to continue walking in the presence of the Lord. That if there be anything within us, and I'm, as our sister is speaking, I'm reminded of the word in the book of First John, which says that if you do not love the person that you see, how can you say that you love God? In the same way, if you cannot forgive the person that you see, how can you say that you are forgiven even by God? So it is two-way traffic. It's two-way. And I love when in Matthew, you know, in Luke 6, the Bible says that to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies and do good to those who hate you. And we started by saying, and this is how we usually know that the Spirit is working in us. I actually, we didn't even know that this was the message that was coming. But we said saying sorry is so hard. It is not the easiest thing to do. It is so hard. But the Bible tells us, love your enemies and do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Judge of God, I understand that the minute we do this, if it comes from our heart and we even approach our people and we ask for forgiveness, pray free, and when we approach them physically and do so, that because it's not easy to do, but when it does happen, there's a package of blessings that are attached to it, a package of blessings that are attached to, the, to it. And that's what we want to reach out and experience and enjoy even as the Lord blesses us. Whenever there is a command, there there is also a blessing that is attached to us when we, we when we meet it. And so in this season, church, as we pour our hearts out before the Lord in thanksgiving and in gratitude for what he has done for us, we, if there be anything that can hold us back from that, that's why we are approaching this season also with repentance and asking for forgiveness even in, on our part and so that the Lord will continue to release his heart over us and we shall enjoy the breakthrough that the Lord has given and has in store for us throughout this season. Church of God is a privilege to be here. The Lord has had his grace over all of us. It is ultimately the grace and the heart of the Lord that has brought us this far. And that being the case, we also have to start in our position and surrender all. We love the song where we sing that I surrender all. It means if we surrender, we surrender it all unto the Lord our God. He can help us to walk in forgiveness. He can help us to achieve that. It's not easy on us, but he helps He helps us to search our hearts. And when he searches our hearts and exposes what is in our hearts, then we are able to go before him in repentance. And we know that the Lord will help us even as we walk through this season, that he will accept our gratitude in the mighty name of Jesus. Church of God, we are thankful before the Lord. I know you are, and I know we are, and I know and I, and I believe I am, we are this morning. May this one be our portion, even as we search our hearts and prayer free as the Spirit exposes what He exposes, may we release it to the Lord in prayer and know that the Lord will help us through this season. All in all, may we be reminded that our God has been gracious to us. Walk through this season even higher than we have been, as our sister has said, it is from one level to another. And you know, it's for a good reason and a good cause that the Lord has brought us here. Be blessed as you approach this day. The Lord has had mercy on you to cross you over into this season of festivity as we are approaching this month. It is by his grace and Lord God Almighty, we know that we shall accomplish your reason for us in this season to the glory of your name. We are blessed and church be blessed as you go on your way we shall meet again here on monday morning and those are who are around adelaide tomorrow is the day that we usually go to um the prayer meeting the combined bigger prayer meeting so we don't go to 117 but we go to start road for the combined interdenominational intercessory meeting that is tomorrow and then we shall be able to resume back um the saturday after where we go to 117 goodwood road god bless you so very much enjoy the day uh, be, be be positive in this december uh, vacation that we are going into go on to it victoriously and know that the lord is with us. He has given us grace and brought us this far. It is by his grace that we are here and we shall even go further. God bless you and do you well. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. And surely 
goodness of God and his mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord now and forevermore. Amen and amen. God bless you so much and see you again here online on Monday, otherwise through the weekend when we see you, if we see you. God bless you so much. Bye for now.